Okay, the video everybody's been waiting for. What is going on with the S&P 500? These are the E-mini futures for December 2021. Of course, that symbol is forward slash ES. You can also trade, if you want to do it on the cheap, so to speak, you can trade the forward slash MES. Those are the E-micro S&P 500 futures. Really nice guys. I trade these guys and gals. I trade these a lot because they're very affordable. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Let's zoom in just a little bit closer. What is happening with the S&P 500? So today is November 5th, 2021. That's what we're looking at. Well, hit all-time high again. That's been going on since about October 13th. Been on fire. On fire. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. Just awesome. Okay. So a little bit of a concern here, guys. A little bit of concern. See this red dot right here? Yeah, that's a divergence. So that's part of my divergence logic that's going on behind the scenes for both the SMI and the Big Daddy forecast. It's checking for divergences. Okay? So there's a little bit of a divergence that showed up here. And um, when we get red like that, you can look back over here. You can see red and yellow start showing up. Red and yellow on both these indicators, right? Look what happened next. Okay. Also, look down here at the very bottom, guys. The amplitude percent indicator. New indicator I created just recently. It's got a red coloring going on. And what does that mean? That's the distance between the, the candlestick and the 50, in this case, the 50-day moving average. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look. Let's look, into, let's look back a little bit here, guys. Let me clear the screen. Guys and gals, let's look back. The last time we saw that, way back here. Let me zoom out even a little more and see if we can get this to zoom out some more here. Last time we saw red was here, right? And we had a pretty significant three-day decline way back here. Decline going on there, okay? So... And one of the big differences between now, obviously got red here, bunch of white, three day and four day divergences are showing up there. Now we got a red one. But the big difference between now and any other time is look at this MACD. Oh my gosh. You know, I've been saying you could put a, you could sail silver freighter ships through that, that gap. Huge. All right. So there's definitely a little bit of a concern here just on the distance we are away from the 50-day moving average. It is, is about as much as we've seen in a long time. Okay? The Big Daddy says, now the other thing I want to talk about actually is yesterday, the Big Daddy 435. That's not a huge, like the biggest number we've ever seen, but it's pretty high. That right there is pretty high, guys, 435, okay? And now we got this red dot showing up. So we're going to want to keep a really close eye on the S&P 500 because when we start seeing those red dots showing up like that, guys, like back here and back here, well, and even over here, which didn't end up being that big of a, big of a deal in this case, okay? But we definitely want to keep an eye on it. This is very elevated. Okay, I'm not going to claim some big crash or pullback or anything like that, but we definitely want to keep an eye on it because we're getting some indications that the market may be showing some weakness, okay? These two indicators are starting to suggest there might be some price decline. Okay, let's go look at the monthly. Let's see what's going on there. Let me grab the pencil. Let me actually let me look at this value. Yeah, 434 in the monthly. 431 back there. This was 438, okay? All very strong though, all very strong. But we got a red there and in a couple months of a pullback. Bunch of white, three and four month divergence and we got that September, October pullback, right? Was that September? Yeah, September. All right, so Definitely want to keep an eye on this, guys. Got some elevated stuff going on here. 
in the S&P 500. This month just got started, so 434 is you know not something we can really rely on as far as that big daddy number because it's still the beginning of the month. So we can't really do anything with that yet because this month, obviously, just remember, we're on the monthly, monthly chart here. Okay, but definitely concerned, guys, that the distance, even on the monthly chart, is really far away. So we're seeing, you know, we're seeing elevated distance between the candlesticks and 50 on the daily and on the monthly. And then one other thing I want to look at is, look at this number over here. The, the amplitude percent is 29.67, okay? So it's pretty high compared to recent times, right? Look how elevated it is. Okay, so let's look back here. When's, it, when's the last time we saw it higher than that? 21. Okay. 20. We haven't seen any 29s. Let's go back even further. Looking for something really peaky. What's this right here? Here's a 35. Back in 1998, guys. Okay, you don't get much higher than we're at right now as far as amplitude. Okay, what was this? 33. You know what that was? One of the biggest crashes in stock market history, the 1987 stock market crash. Okay, so just a heads up that on the amplitude percent indicator, which is an indicator I just created recently. Yeah, back here, it was 35 and 36 in 1998. And everybody knows... Look at that big crash right there. Oh my gosh. For 176 points back in 1998, guys, let me tell you something. That was huge. Okay. That's huge. 35% away. Okay. So look at the distance between the candlestick. Remember, monthly chart we're looking at. Look at that distance there, guys. That was 35% was a distance. That's one of the few times we've seen in history that the percent was greater than what we have going on right now. Let's look it over here. Let's try to find the greatest percentage. Here was 29, guys. Look at right there. Grab the pencil. 29, right in this area. Okay, which is exactly what we have now. And it took what? Another eight or nine months, and then one of the biggest stock market crashes again, 2000 to 2003 occurred. Okay? So, guys... We really need to pay attention that the distance away from the 50 month is getting pretty high. If we start seeing yellow and red dots showing up here, guys, and this big daddy gets above, gets into the 440, you know what? Let me, one more thing before we switch back over to the weekly. Okay, I always want to see in 1998, what was the big daddy? Yeah, 423, guys. So we're already above that. What was it in 1987? Yeah, 394. So guys, already we're above the Big Daddy numbers than we've seen historically on these crashes that happen at even lower numbers. Okay, so we've got a pretty high Big Daddy, even though the month's not done yet. We've got some dots showing up here, which suggests that we've, which is not suggesting, but actually telling us we have divergence between the indicators and price. Okay. So, I mean, it's clear right there at the moment anyway, there's a divergence going on here, right? Look at right here on the SMI. Down with the indicator, okay, but price is going up, okay? One of the highest amplitude percentages we've seen in history. Only like one or two, two times, maybe three times the most in history has the amplitude, this distance, been greater than it is right now. Okay, so definitely need to keep an eye on this. This is looking pretty hot. Let's go to the weekly. What we got going on here? Oh my goodness, look at this, guys. When did this show up? I think that's this week. Yeah, this week, last week. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, I didn't even know that till now because I'm just doing this on the fly, guys. Look at this. Look at this. Cluster of yellow. Cluster of yellow, guys. Wow. Okay. Whole cluster of yellow. I'll be looking for red to show up. Now, though sometimes this will happen coming out of a recent low like it did over here, okay? Hit this low, come up, you get this, kind of get a false flag, so. 
what do we got going on for the for the amplitude percent on the weekly yeah pretty high pretty high what was it over here when it pulled pulled back 9.5 guys right here when it pulled back let me get the just so everybody knows what i'm talking about right over here the distance between there and there was 9.5 or 9.5 percent okay 9.58 and where are we at right now 9.65 at the end of today is friday remember uh, uh, november 1st so this week just ended today like a few hours ago and we're at 9.65 percent guys pretty elevated stuff okay so everything is kind of saying that we need to really pay attention to the s p 500 we're looking at the hourly chart guys switch over to the hourly obviously the end of the day was a big tapering off okay yeah not gonna make too much of the hourly because that's just the way it is but i did say remember i said i said this yesterday i said there's a good chance that the s p 500 the hourly chart is going to want to come back to the 50. well there you go guys at the end of the day starting from about actually from nine o'clock on the whole thing just gave it all back okay and well not gave it all back from this but came back pretty close to the 50. Hasn't gotten down there yet, 4669 on the hourly, and it got all the way down to 4685. Okay. Um, man, we are so far above. On the MACD, guys, we are seriously, look, this is zero line that way back over here, like last Tuesday. We are so far above on the MACD, above this zero line. It's crazy how high we are. Even with this pullback right here on the hourly, we're still way above the zero line on the MACD. Okay. Yeah, 9.9. .9. That was a given that we were going to come back towards this 50 today on the hourly. All right. Yeah, wow. One last look at the weekly, guys. We'll finish up this video, give you my final thoughts on this. Whew, my goodness. Not ready to roll over, though. Doesn't look like it's ready to roll over, guys. That's that's the one thing about the weekly. Looks like it still wants to go up. Let me look at the daily one more time. Really trying to get a good feel for what where this is headed. Yep, still looks strong here, too. Possibly a, pull, a little pullback on the daily, guys. Seeing some red there. Could get a pullback on the daily, guys. This is pretty elevated stuff here at 435 yesterday. So my guess is, guys, on the daily might begin to see some weakness and this thing might start tracking sideways and start coming down okay if i were to just guess because you know this with this stock market and the s p 500 you gotta be careful because this thing is continues to be a monster absolute monster but if i were to throw this in there and just kind of give it a best guess guys and this thing were to weaken trying to think the last time we had a yeah it was way over there it's probably a little too aggressive yeah because we're just kind of showing it now maybe it's like Maybe it's kind of like this second wave after the bump. After the bump. Yeah. Maybe we get like a four or five day down. Track sideways go down. If I had to guess, and this is coming up, put it in there. 45.80. Jeez, that's a whole hundred points from where we're at right now, guys. So I'm not saying we're going to get this pullback, but it's very possible we could get it. I'm just seeing some stuff here that looks like it could happen. Okay. I think we're going to get a pullback here. I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but it looks like to me it's kind of getting set up to happen. I think 4580 is doable. That's my best guess on this amazing, absolute amazing run in the S&P 500, guys. Seeing some weakness, seeing some big distance away from the from the 50, both on the monthly and on the daily. We're seeing a lot of distance. The weekly shows there's more room to go up. The daily is beginning to show some weakness creeping in here. I'd be definitely, you know, keep an eye on it, guys. For a possible pullback on the daily. And if it does happen, at least at the moment, looking like it'd come back down somewhere near 4580. All right, guys and gals, that's my best take on what we got going on the SP 500. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, guys. Give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to click that little bell. You'll be notified of all the videos. Guys, listen, I'm going to be putting out videos every day on all the futures that I'm keeping track of, okay? So you're going to get all this service for free, guys. Okay, a lot of people paying big money for this kind of service. You're all getting it for free. So please subscribe, okay? Happy trading, everybody. We'll talk to you all real soon again next time.